What is going on, guys? Good afternoon. It's your favorite mortgage lender of Del Guatney. We've got mortgages. Super, super excited. We have a lot to talk about. Um, so many different changes that are happening <clears throat> with the market. Uh, we're going to do a deep dive and find out exactly what happened last week. What is the expectation this week? Not too much data that we have going on, but man, is the last week of October going to be such a precedented week, truly going to be setting the tone in regards to where we're going to see interest rates start to move and really set the tone with employment and a little bit of changes with the PCE report. So I am going to go ahead and share my screen and then we are going to get cranking away um, and rock and roll. So, <clears throat> so starting off at the top, what was the expectations that we saw last week? Not too much data, but, you know, a little bit of changes in regards to the market. Mortgage bond market is taking such a huge, huge hit right now. We're going to see how rates kind of back to where we were about three, four months ago when interest rates started to go up. And we start off first talking about uh, new construction. It actually has slowly, slowly slowed down. Home builder confidence is high, which is great. That is something that we always want to see and monitor in an effort to see positive movements within the market. Um, now, we also saw retail sales. This is where uh, we took a little bit of a hit. People are still spending their money. Where are they getting this money? I have no idea. Uh, but people are swiping. And actually, I do have an idea. They're swiping their credit cards. Everything is going on credit right now. We're going to dive into that. And then we'll also see, again, every single week, Thursdays, we get updates on jobless claims. That kind of also showed a little bit of weakness, less than expectations. So starting from the top, Home builder confidence, once again, we saw actually rise. Second straight month, this is actually pretty much a good thing, right? When inflation is obviously slowing down, interest rates are starting to go down. Home builder confidence, again, jumped up two points. Remember, we want to get close to the 50, and that's really where we'll see a positive territory. Us rising once again after the spring and summer where rates were a little sticky is great news. October, again, also saw three different improvements. Buyer traffic, listen, rates are going down. Although we've been kind of turning within the last two weeks, like we'll see toward the end, uh, current and future sales expectations, again, is on a positive level. Builders, once again, are seeing clearly the housing market. They look at it for the next six months. Again, seeing future expectations start to jump. As you guys can see here, we're kind of really teetering, right? The summer was a little eh, and then we're kind of increasing that. Once again, anything that is under 49, builders are seeing builder confidence. Once again, rose second straight month. Future sales expectation, this is great. Right. As we start looking into the positive notation, buyer traffic, as we know, slowed down. But this is great for news for us to see. So starting positive notes when we talk about the expansion areas. Right. If we see also now on the flip side, new construction, once again, although a little bit of reductions on the permit side, this is what I really like to see. Almost one point six million um, completion homes showing almost fourteen point six year over year completions when we talk about new construction. So, again, it fell month over month not keeping which future man, which has been the narrative for many, many years now. Uh, but we're still seeing, again, as interest rates starting to decline, home values and demand is obviously going to increase. Okay. So again, builders are feeling more confident about the future, which is fantastic. New construction, once again, on the home sale front is going to it's just not keeping up with demand as it hasn't been for quite some time, right? Now we talk about retail sales. Retail sales, once again, beat the estimates. It rose 0.4% in September above 0.3% gain the market was expecting, which again is kind of hit the market a little like we'll see. So the sales figure again for September showed consumer spending. Remember right around the corner, right? We're going to have the holiday season, right? With Christmas. So uh, how is this going to impact, right? The market we're expected to again, increase two and a half to three and a half percent compared to last year. When we talk about increases within uh, retail spending and consumer spending. So that's going to sign a dip and hit a little bit on the um, inflation route. So we'll keep an eye, close eye on that. Jobless claims, once again, it did drop 19,000. Not the biggest difference as they continue revising it. Continuing claims, though. we got to keep an eye out for this, as I've said before. People are, again, as they're losing their jobs, they're still going ahead and continuing to claim unemployment, which is obviously showing a little bit of volatility, right? <clears throat> we saw, of course, hurricanes. Um, in North Carolina and Florida, you know, uh, crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, that obviously showed a spike in the highest levels in July, which we saw, which, you know, uh, hit hit the market favorably. Um, now, of course, you know, it's, it's good to know, obviously, that some of the non-hurricane areas did show a little bit of weakness within. Now, continuing claims is, again, at the highest level since July. 
uh, really close to November 2021, which we all know during COVID time where it was, right? Uh, so again, this week, like I said, not a lot going on. We have uh, September existing home sales along with new home sales that will come out on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we'll get new home sale data along with the week-to-week jobless claims. Now, we're kind of seeing, listen, the bond market is not liking this movement. And we're going to see a lot of different announcements that were happening, right? Uh, we saw the bond market took a sh- super, super sharp hit, which we'll look at briefly. Uh, China went again and actually cut their side of it. 25 basis points in their latest effort, again, to help employment and stock market. That does eventually translate into our side as well. Different members within the Fed, right? Uh, Rafael Basak, who's, again, one of the really a little bit more aggressive, uh, is open to pausing cuts. So, again, in less than two weeks, we'll have the next Fed meeting in November. Again, if the data comes in, next week is so critical for us to keep an eye on some of the Fed data and really try to make a case in regards to where – um, the federal funds rate needs to basically stay flat at three or three and a half by next year. Uh, doesn't seem like, according to him, that the Fed is in a rush to kind of reach that median. <clears throat> now, again, a little concern in regards to inflation stalling out, right? Because we feel like um, they want to be patient, but at the same time, they also want to make sure we don't get that inverted yield curve as we've been kind of seeing, right? Um, so we'll kind of see... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So like I said, not a lot going on this week, except just continuing home sales and new home sales uh, data that's going to come out. Um, We will see, though, next week is going to be critical. Uh, Tuesday, we'll get the job opening and labor turnovers. On the 30th, we'll get the ADP report. And then on the 31st, we'll get the PCE report, personal consumption expenditure report. The infamous BLS report will be out on Friday. And then the following week will be the Fed minutes. So Really, a lot of different changes in tones. We could literally change our stance from where we're at um, this week into where we'll go next. Now, kind of looking at the market, it's really not reacting too favorably, right? And let me zoom in on this, and I'll show it to you guys. Uh, Where we're kind of teetering at right now is about a 6.82. We got really teased, I would say, around September, right before the Fed meeting, And then, boom, right when the Fed actually went ahead and announced that they were going to cut their federal funds rate, the market obviously reacted. Um, So we did a decent, I would say, for about, give or take, about two to three weeks, right? We teetered around 6.15, yeah, about two weeks. And then we've been sharply jumping up since, kind of really, really closer to where we were about four months ago, right? Three to four months ago. So. Um, So really want to kind of keep an eye on this stuff. Again, inflation and employment, huge data reports that are going to come out. Um, And they're truly, you know, rates have jumped up to the highest that they have been in July, kind of slowing things down a little bit for some of our clients. So I'll keep you guys updated as we continue seeing some of this data and we'll take it from there. Right. But as you guys can see, uh, negative readings, positive readings, this was pretty neutral. That was last Friday. Not a lot of data to go off of. Um, I, you know, the market is reacting fairly negatively to where we're at right now. If we kind of take a look at it, today was a pretty rough day. The bond market took almost a 50 basis point hit. Yeah, 51 basis points. We're kind of teetering. And again, how you read this, guys, is anything that moves down means rates are going up. It's an inverted curve. And as you can kind of see, right, rates have been pretty much ticking up truly since the Fed cut, right? And we've been on a little bit of that downward trend really sharply over the last three weeks. So we'll keep you guys updated again. Hopefully we'll get some positive data as we continue starting to see a little bit of changes within the market when it comes to inflation and employment. And we'll take it from there. I appreciate you guys jumping on. As always, you guys can visit gotmortgages.com slash blogs for updates, copy of this market update, along with the recording itself. We'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great day.